this is, this is, this is. All right. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, sure, bro. Good to see you. All right, we got Peg Leg, we got Bean, we got Bean, we got Peg Leg. What's up with the nicknames? Everybody's gonna be like, "Are these their real names?" Uh-huh. Great to uh-huh. great to see you, Dingies. Hey man, yeah. good to see you. Peg Leg nickname is his broken leg, bro. So now he has a broad in his leg, so we just call him the Peg. Yeah, <laughs> yep. But we're both we're both Matthews, you know. So you and needed. Then, uh, and then we were hanging with Supertones in those early days, and they got a Matthew too. So we became Peg, Bean, and Mojo. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, you you had Peg Leg early on, like before I even I think we even met. You had yeah, that was high school. It was a snowboarding accident. Snapped mm-hmm. my femur in half, and they put a uh, you know titanium rod in there and two pins. It's still in there. I'm I'm too afraid to get it out. So yeah, it's just part of you. Yeah. Does it? Do you feel it? Yeah, a little bit. Like, it's not painful, but it's a weird sensation when the weather changes quickly, you know? It just feels like, you know, this it. It's like, oh, yeah, there's something in that leg. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Unlike the other. Yeah, it's weird, dude. It, it kind of... <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to think about it too much, too. You freak yourself out a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're all bionic. We're going to be bionic yeah. in the future even uh-huh. more. More than yeah. that. Well, <laughs> Well, dude, like good vibes. Um, you guys are you're living in Hawaii now, uh, both of you guys. I am, yeah. You I've are been living here. He he was living here for a while. He went back to Humboldt, but I've been here since '09. So okay, yeah, we, we moved out in 2009, kind of at the same time. So you're just out yeah. visiting Pegleg. You're you're visiting Bean or the island. Yeah, well, you got family or what? Well, he lived in Lahaina, yeah, and it burnt down. Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, can we talk about that? Because that's insane, and, yeah. and I don't, I don't, I feel like it was a big news story, and then it died down real quick. So, yeah, uh, it was big. I mean, it was the worst fire in United States history. So a lot of people died, a lot of houses lost, a lot of just destruction. It looked like a, literally looks like a nuclear bomb went off at the site. You know, just destruction. So yeah, everything that was there was gone, and so we've all had to kind of relocate and start over I, I, the place i worked at the place i lived all just burned so so crazy that is crazy what what was the date on that was that like in september august or 8th. august 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 8th. august 8th yeah august 8th I, I just remember just seeing pictures and video and it was just everything was on fire everything like maybe yeah. like one thing didn't burn down but but um there was a lot of unanswered questions that uh, maybe they're going to make a document. I don't know what they're going to do, but I feel like those are those are still in it. So where were you when this happened? Were you there? Literally right in it. The power was out that day, so we were just all hanging out. Uh, and I kind of walked around the corner and saw some smoke and thought, hmm, that's not looking good. And then 20 minutes later, it was more smoke and then more smoke, and then that was it. And then people just started fleeing the town because it was on fire like in a movie. It was just fireballs rolling through. The wind was rolling, debris everywhere. So, yeah, it was pretty insane. So we just got in a car, and a lot of people hung out at a parking lot, and we were just kind of waiting to see. The fire just kept coming. So we had to go on the road, fire behind, and then that was it. That was the end of the town after that. Was there any roadblocks or anything that you guys got stuck in? No, it was everyone was literally uh, on the same page, just trying to get the, the, the themselves out of the fire zone. So people were just in a caravan leaving. A lot of people were driving on the opposite side of traffic to get out but everyone knew that no one was coming back into the fire so mm. but it was a pretty chaotic scene because there's literally only like one way in and one way out so everybody that was in the town was trying to get out the same way so it was pretty pretty scary mm-hmm. but but he's right a lot of people did get roadblock on on front street yeah yeah he was, uh, he was like above one alley above front street i think that's why you avoided getting caught you were you were a little bit above the where the fire was a little bit. Well, no, I was right in it. I was just a little above the, the street that he was talking about. Oh. That sometimes people got stuck on, which is like a block up. But yeah, no, my house and everything was right in the burn zone, so everything yeah. just flattened. What, what time did you leave your house? Probably like uh, four-ish. I, I think the fire started like around three-something, and then it started getting to right where we lived around four. And is that p.m.? kind of waited to see. Yeah, P- in the afternoon. So, yeah, so it, and then it got dark. 
Yeah, and it just kept going. So, and then I'm sure you've seen the video of at nighttime where yeah. people were in the water. There was, you know, boats were filming uh, the, from the ocean to the shore. That was all stuff that was just all going on. It just ha- like I said, it happened so fast. The wind was the problem. It was just so much wind, you know. Yeah, it sucked. Man, so have the so what's gonna so now? How do you feel now about it? Like, do you feel like everything was kind of like okay that that seems like legit as far as the response that you guys got for for no, rescue it's workers all, it's or a lot of mess like they said like you know uh there was no warnings so we have uh in why here we have the tsunami warning sirens mm-hmm. and they didn't sound those like people physically can sound those when there's a, a disaster they didn't sound those uh the fire department the police didn't kind of roll through the neighborhoods and announce that they needed to leave um a lot of the power, the power in all of the town of Lahaina was out because the power lines had been down from the wind the night before. So power and cell phone lines were out. So there was really a, a, a serious lack of communication. No one really knew what was going on. So I was just kind of hanging out in town waiting for power and everything to come back on. And then the fire just hit. So it kinda, no one really could communicate with each other. So yeah. Crazy. It's wild how when something like this happens, you realize how thin the line is between safety and disaster. Like, exactly. It's like this. Yeah. I mean, if we were asleep in our house, we would have, you know, who knows what would have happened. We were just there. No one was helping us or telling us we better get out. So, like, I was just wandering around. If, uh, you know, we'd taken a nap or something, I don't know. Could have been disastrous. But, yeah, everybody, uh, everyone that made it out has that, you know, experience. It's pretty crazy. A lot of people lost family members. Um, yeah. But also pets. A lot of pets disappeared. Tons of pets. Yeah, a lot. There's a wall of just kind of like a uh, disappearing act of just all the pictures of the animals that no one's found yet. So mm-hmm. it's kind of sad. Which, yeah, all he made it out was his dog. Yeah. Crazy. Your dog. I'm glad you got your dog. So yeah. your house is gone. What's your plan yeah. for, for right now? What do, what do you? Where are you at now? Where are you staying? So now I just have a friend. Uh, I'm staying with a friend. Um, they have an extra room for me. Uh, I'm just waiting to get into a new apartment. I'm probably maybe april or may move into a new apartment i was able i was lucky enough to score uh, an apartment they had a lottery for uh, workforce housing so people that obviously work on maui in the in the work sector they had a lottery for a housing for an apartment i was able to get one of those apartments so i'm stoked on that so that's right. going to be in about four months so now i'm just work uh staying at friends i'm, I'm working uh, still down at one of the hotels and that's it just kind of re- re- rebuilding we're still doing music. He came out. We're still going to record and continue to do our, our passion. So, you know, but you know, it's yeah. a little different. I got I to gotta start rebuying and rebuilding bases and stuff like that. But other than that, it's good. <laughs> yeah, his base that was on every record, every show, every tour, turns up that day. Speak up. Speak up, so, Peg. Speak up a little. Uh, I was saying his base, you know, that was on every record and uh, played every show and every tour for that day. It's gone. And, um, yeah. yeah, it's gone. Oh uh, man, you know, I, I'm it's like an extension of your hand, man. <laughs> I I know it's stu- it's still so fresh. It's not even like half a year ago. Yeah. I'm amazed how you're smiling, how you're like you're in a place that's I don't know, you're okay like but you lost everything. A lot of people lost, you know, all a lot of people you know, you you may they may have if they survived may move somewhere where you, you'll never see them again. It's just like life is yeah. different now. Like it's totally changed. You, you know, uh, I'm not going to compare this at all, but Pete Carroll from the, C- the Seahawks coach just retired. So life is going to be different for, for the Seahawks, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whole new world, whole new world. But, but I just love how your outlook on it is like, Hey, we're just, you know, I, I survived. I'm here. I'm working. I still have a life. Peg is here. We're going to make some music, do what I love. Man, I love that. Yeah. The Dingies, you know, the Dingies have been around a long, long time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you never, you, you can't kill an idea. You can't kill an idea. You can't, you know, you can't burn an idea. You want to or not. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like no matter what happens in life, as long as we make it through the other side of that fire, we can... You know, yeah. you guys as artists write songs about it. You you can you can memorialize it in in the way you you know. But um, man, I'm just I'm just kind of in awe just hearing it. So so what what would happen if you didn't have a friend to stay with? What would you have to do? You have to get a uh, hotel. So they they have places. Uh, 
a lot of the hotels have been able to house people that have been displaced. You, you got to show your ID to prove that where you were living was in the burn zone. And then um, a lot of the hotels have been housing people. A lot of the uh, Airbnbs have been opening themselves up to people like that too. But it's hard because there's still a lot of people on the island that are living here. And so they're getting displaced out of houses so that people that have their houses burnt can move into other houses. So it's kind of like a mm. lateral move, which I don't know if it's, a good or not but it's it's just still a lot of uncertainty and chaos going on here and uh you know i don't know it's just so it's uncharted waters you know <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean people in maui definitely are strong and they respect it's definitely been a great seeing of the the community come together like you said strong yeah. and united so united it's, it's cool yeah to see people come together that's amazing. Hawaii is amazing. I love it there. I, I always just, you know, so what's the tourism situation? Do they want people to come and support that or, or yeah, is it not know, ready? It's, it's like, a little divided, but I think it's it's time where, you know, the economy here is, is tourist driven, uh, which sucks, but that's how it is. And so like, you know, a lot of these families, people work at the hotels and the restaurants that people come to. So it's like, they need to get back to work to support their families and they can't work if people aren't coming here. So it's kind of a, like a catch 22 right so but the people that are out of houses where are they going to go they're in the hotels mm -hmm. but we need the people to come in the hotels and spend the money so it's it's just one of those dilemmas right so people are trying to figure it out so half half of the people are really wanting everything to come back and then some of the people are like no we're not ready so um but you can't blame either side because it's like i said it's, it's something that no one's ever experienced so everyone's yeah. trying to deal with it their own way so, you're not sure you know yeah you're not sure what the right way to to do it is huh, man i mean that kind of feels but like overall, being an artist vibe, sometimes we're, we're welcoming people we're welcome <laughs> the vibe is welcoming for people because you know every lahaina is a small part of the island right so all the beaches the you know haleakala hana all the main attractions of of maui are still completely here and intact it's just the actual town of lahaina is gone so there's still plenty of places for people to come and visit and enjoy and do that so i think it's now starting people are starting to realize that over the last you know five six months but it's, yeah it's been uncharted waters well your ep came out i think a same month i think, I think as as after, this right? happened right like uh, it might have been like a month later a month later it was september, september. Was, was it september september 23rd drop seed yeah drop seed um Obviously, you weren't planning on dealing with this fire when you had you were working on this EP and kind of getting it ready to release, and it was probably already in the pipeline when when that happened. But um, yeah, we literally finished recording two the last two songs on bass like a week week before the fire, literally. So yeah, yeah, he came he came to LA and I was down there, and we did like those two punk songs from the EP on his you know the bass he's played on every song. And then he went back, and then a week later, yeah, or two weeks later, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was in the pipe, like you said, fresh. It was in the pipe. You got, maybe, it was, you know, everybody. Every time it rains when we go to LA, they're like, "Oh, you brought the weather with you." Yeah. So maybe you brought the fire with that EP. Right. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. That's, That's joke. Told me when terrible. Terrible joke. Here to the island because I came here from Humboldt, where it's raining and cold now, and then. Uh, when I landed, there was a hurricane, and like, <laughs> jeez, all, all these trees behind us like fell over. We had to pick them back up. Yep, <laughs> you, yep, you brought it. You brought the the <laughs> wind. Wild, wi wild wind is the first name off the, the first song on the on the EP, right? So, yeah. so listening to this thing, it's like, okay, yeah, it sounds like the Dingies. You guys have been doing kind of a a mix of punk, kind of old school punk songs mixed with reggae ska like all of the above eclectic kind of yeah. i hear you doing some voices in there now and again um and then i listen to your old stuff and it like okay yeah i mean yeah. same voice same same sentiment like i i it's just 20 years later or whatever it is i don't know when that first <laughs> armageddon massive came out but when was that first record released 98 98 all right, all 26 right. Twenty six years ago, now twenty five and a half. Yeah, see, yeah. there you go. Uh, still no vinyl. Still no vinyl. The yeah. Have you gotten a lot of requests for vinyl for Armageddon Massive? That one. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was your first record. That's that's when I you know I I 
was around you guys the most um, was when I was listening to you guys play live, playing those songs. Um, yeah, that's when we toured. That's when you toured. Yeah, it was great. I mean, great record, man. Like, really, really, really great record. And this new, this new thing, Drop Seeds, four songs. Um, if you like the Dingies, I think, yeah, I think you're going to like it. Um, why don't you guys talk about what the Dingies have been up to? Um, and if that's not a lot, then we can talk about that too. Like, it seems like you guys write the songs and record them and put them out, but you're not necessarily going out and playing live a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. But there's obviously reasons for that. Yeah. Well, you know, we all you're all split up in different areas, different places. Yeah. Who's who's playing? Uh, who's playing what it, on on this new EP now? Oh, okay. So I played most of the guitars. Um, some of my friends uh, played some lean parts, like uh, the, sec the the last song has George Frasca. I don't know if you know him. He's a band called Four, and then he was like a smiling kid. Smiley Kids. I've heard of Smiley Kids. Yeah. So he played like the lead guitar on that song. But I did all the rhythms, which is kind of new. I never done that before on Tenji's recordings. Um, doing then, like what we yeah. yeah, me doing recording, tracking all the tracking guitars. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And um, and then Dean did the bass, and then Scrogers who's been the drummer since '99 after Ethan. Uh, he played drums. Um, those are the punk songs, but then uh, it actually came from earlier recordings because, you know, we've been recording full ska albums as Peg and the Rejected, but it's still just the same Dingy's members, yeah? And so... Um, Got it. Peg and the, the Rejected. Song, yeah. The ska song on the EP and the reggae song actually like taking the rejected sessions that we never finished those songs yeah and um so yeah the, and we just passed it the two punk songs and threw it together as the things you see you know but we've been doing the our own little label international city and um we put peg and rejected out on that we put our solo stuff and dave has some solo stuff Rogers has some solo stuff and uh I don't have solo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just collaborate. Oh, but, uh, yeah, so... I think, like, we finally had, like, another uh, kind of dingy feel of collection of songs and, and a kind of a return to form of, of just punk, ska, and reggae. Yeah, so... Um, and then putting it out on the di as the dingies is going to get more eyes on it than any of our other things that we do. You know, it just has the most followers. Yeah, of course. And it sound it is the Dingies. I mean, it's you guys. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize you had the same drummer since '99. That's great. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, I mean, it all kind of just became like family, you know, like brothers. And so it's just kind of like assumed that we we we'll just keep, keep playing. It, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, hey, time to record again. When are you going to do it? All right, get yeah, these drums on. Rogers <laughs> actually makes movies. He's like in Hollywood. And, he directs and writes <laughs> movies and stars in them. And stuff. What's his most well-known movie? I don't know. What Do you know? I mean, they're not super well-known, no, but um, <laughs> he, has <one> called, <laughs> he has one called The Dramatic. I mean, there's some... The dramat on Netflix, right? Dramatics, right? Yeah. Dramatics, okay. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the other one? I think I've heard of The Dramatics on Netflix. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Out. I'll check it out. Yeah. I'll check it out. There's some dingy songs in it, actually. In the soundtrack. Too. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's great that you guys are still doing dingies and just keeping it rolling now and again, putting out some songs, putting out, you know, lyrically, are you, I mean, you've always kind of been revolutionary, um, trying to be, not trying to be, just like maybe talking about some social, political ideas and kind of how you deal with the world and, and all that. Is it still kind of like, lyrically like that i mean i don't know if you want to try, talk about that a little bit before we we roll this thing up but i always kind of on twitter you're always like 
very uh, kind of anarchist kind of views or whatever does that seep into the lyrics or yeah bean are you uncomfortable <laughs> no i'm laughing <laughs> you're like yeah i know what well, you're, you're talking about <laughs> 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 um, yeah so and, and like because of that the one critique i've heard about it the whole time is yeah you can point out all the problems but you don't have a solution yet and but what my solution is, is for the way I've, like, ended up living my life, you know? Like, um, I, I live, like, uh, growing food, you know? I have a little farm, and I grow tons of food, and I try to be as self-sufficient in that area as I can. And that's what Drop Seeds is about. And then we have, like, a demo version of a, a follow-up to that, which is full album called Deep Ecology. <laughs> really like in my philosophy or whatever like facing all those problems like social problems like the way the system is the way the world runs like my solution in my life is to was to get out of the city and to get closer to land and to cultivate like my own food most importantly and to have control of that as much as i can at least and so uh the difference i think in like drop seeds lyrics then the the pasta is it's not really focusing on all the problems it's more like this these are my solutions you know mm, i like that planting seeds growing yeah you know, what's your main idea what's your i know this is going to sound too granular but i want to know what you're growing what are you eating mainly oh uh, well i don't eat meat so okay. I, mostly vegetables yeah i, I have every, i do a big pumpkin patch um and then I just have, you know, what I, what I have a couple little greenhouses so I can get away with tomatoes up there, and, uh, herbs, like culinary herbs for, the, for cooking. Um, of course, I, I, grow, I grow a bunch of kale and cabbage and all kind of brassicas that do well in the colder environment. So you just, you just grow kind of a plethora of different vegetables yeah, just, and you, you can get eat those fruit. fruit. Yeah. Yeah, we have a we have an orchard that's like thirty trees. There's pears and apples and berries and plums and stuff like that. And then I have a a greenhouse that that lets me get away with like growing oranges and guavas, you know, more tropical stuff. I couldn't really grow outside of where I live. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I grow a bunch of herbs too, like you know, giant ganja trees. Yeah, that. of course. So that's pretty much it. All yeah, that stuff. you can live off that. Or set, do you also sell some of what you grow? Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> if I can, if, if I, you can, <laughs> you go to the well, farmers we, we market. Have chickens too, so we definitely have a, a farm stand that we sell the eggs to, and uh, yeah, apples. There's always an abundance of the apples. Kind of a yeah. modern day hippie, in a oh, way. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I like but that. To be honest, yeah. like it takes a lot of dedication it takes a lot of work i mean it's like a new job tacked onto whatever else you're doing right like it's just yeah it, it, you know being a farmer basically you're kind of a farmer you know you're farming vegetables yeah. and and eggs or whatever but um dude i mean that to me i love hearing that because it's real and most of us city folk just don't really think of that you know like having a connection to what you eat is so important to the land that you're like we we don't live on a farm or anything but we have things that we grow and my wife grows it and we have like things and and it is so fulfilling to be eating a salad <laughs> that you grew at your house like or that your yeah. wife grew or whatever like that to me is like <laughs> such a great feeling and so like to what you're doing is like actually like all the time you know so that's cool so I'm lazy, you know like i'm not i'm not super hardcore about it and I, what I like about it is like you know it's super busy in seasons and then shit just starts growing so you kick back you can let it yeah <laughs> let it chill yeah, and so let just, the nature do yeah, the nature and you just feed it like I do everything again so I wish song, songs like, I wish songs were like that they can be like that <laughs> but you have yeah. to you have to keep growing them for a long time. I think the season for growing is is a lot longer uh, these days. Anyway, um, maybe back in the day it was a little easier to 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 have a hit song, but even big yeah. songs today aren't that big because you compare it to like the Eagles or Michael Jackson or, or it's like the numbers just don't add up. Um, yeah. But 
just more centralized back then, you know? We were all getting it from radio. Yes, same few channels. So spread out. Mm -hmm. Niche, if you will. But honestly, embracing whatever sort of category that you find yourself in, and, and I don't mean that others put you in. I think maybe you choose to live a life like you're choosing Peg. Uh, that's a niche. You could actually like probably get all those people that live like that to like buy your records, you know. But that also <laughs> takes a whole entrepreneurial kind of spirit yeah. and, and all this. But yeah. that's also more work. But <laughs> but it's possible. It's all possible because people that do the same things end up wanting to support each other. And I think that's yeah. kind of where I'm coming from. So um, no, I thought about that too. Like uh, yeah taking those kind of songs and playing like eco festivals and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just like find a new crowd. Um, mm -hmm. Punk rock is a very small crowd. And, and the longer that I'm in the scene, the more I realize that it's like, wow, it's like really is kind of the same few bands over and over and over. And, you know, and then there's new ones that come up here and there. And then they, a lot of them fall off and it's just, it's a cycle, but um, yeah. I mean, it's our. I'm happy to be part of it. I mean, obviously, I love <laughs> punk rock. I love, yeah. I love the scene, but it is tiny compared to, you know, sports. Compared to politics. Compared like almost yeah. any other yeah. thing you can kind of be into. Um, but that's cool. You know, that's why we do it. I mean, I don't know if that's why we do it, but it's part of the charm of 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 getting into something that not a lot of other people are into. So when you see a dingy shirt across the street, you're like, I know that person likes some good music, you know, like the things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Aloha good. shirt. Maybe, maybe, yeah. you know, it's not a bad shirt either, but <laughs> you're not, you're not going to know what kind of music you like necessarily. <laughs> All right, you guys. Dude, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Obviously, everybody check out the new Drop Seeds EP and um, support Lahaina in any way. Is there any way people yeah. can support Lahaina? Or I mean, like I said, just <clears throat> you can come out and, and visit and support and uh, mm -hmm. show up. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on here that people still need to stop doing. And I mean, I know there's a lot of charities going on, but I think the best way is just to come, show up to Maui and visit like we could because like i said the the economy is a lot of tourism so when people come and go to the restaurants and hotels that's people going to work and feeding their families you know it sounds kind of weird but that's kind of how it is out here absolutely but, you know it's like when you say yeah. listen to dingy's music yeah it's gonna help you out same exactly. go, go to visit maui you know so yeah that's awesome it's super cheap right now too you get a plane ticket like, um so my brother he plays in a, a pop punk band with um uh, Joe and Greg from Slick Shoes, and they're called the Carmines. And he, my brother, plays bass, and he's uh, kind of like a collector. And when he found out that everything burned up, he donated a bass, and it was going to cost like four hundred dollars to ship it out. But then I got like a plane ticket for one hundred and sixty bucks, and just flew, you know brought it out here on the plane for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Now we're going to record with that bass, so that'll be good. That's excellent. First base to start. Now I just got to keep going. Yeah. You heard it, people. Pe pe everybody, yeah, everybody listening. Everybody listening. You heard it. It's really inexpensive to go to Hawaii right now. Go check it out. <laughs> bring bases. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody bring a base. We need to like rebase the island. Yeah. Well, he gave you P base, yeah? Yeah. Well, but I, he I'll wants his jazz base. You want a jazz the bass? Jazz you like bass. jazz? Yeah. Is it the neck the or is it the pickups? What What about the jazz bass is why you prefer the body? Uh, well, I like the jazz bass because the neck is a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a little bit easier to move, especially with some of the ska music that we play with all the walking bass lines. Yep. And like you said, the pickup placement, I don't know, just the way it is. The P bass is awesome. I'm a Fender guy, obviously, but uh, the P bass is a little bit better, fatter. Fatter neck and shorter fretboard. Mm -hmm. the, the jazz bass has two more frets, which doesn't really matter for the kind of music we play. But you know, I just like the feel of it way better. Hey, can I ask you something? Yeah. Oh, so you playing Goldfinger? Yeah. I do. Yeah. So did he be like, "Yo, Mike, make up ska bass lines"? <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. I, yeah. It's it's fun. What is, your, what is your what is your influence for that? What do you listen to that? 
to kind of get a direction for that. Uh, I mean the specials, maybe that's about it. Yeah, I'm not that's super funny. deep. That's number one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, that's Correct answer. Yeah, uh, that'll, that'll that'll be fine. Yeah, You'll that's be good with that. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Those baselines are sick. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean most fun. of the baselines for Goldfinger are writ, you know, already written, so I just learn them. Oh. But um, okay. But you know the well, new the stuff that we write, right? the new stuff yeah, that we right. write. Sometimes are already written, but yes, I will. I will write my own bass lines for that. Um, there's no it, honestly. John always likes the more I do, the better. And I'm like, I don't want to do too much, but yeah, yeah, we, we'll do yeah, a little bit. Groove to it for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's you got a balance. Groove, yeah. yeah, exactly. A balance, right? Right, balance. You know how it is. Yeah, you got to pick and choose where to move and when, how much to move. And for me, you know, it's about the song. So a lot of times it's like I'm just literally just hitting the bass on a few things, you know, like a few parts or whatever. But I'm singing too. So I don't know. I don't know if I would – would I do something different if I wasn't singing? Would I do more? Possibly. Yeah, possibly like a few th- little things. But for the most part, I would still be open, like whole notes. Dun, yeah. dun, but then maybe like a do 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 something like that. Mm-hmm. But when I'm singing – I usually add that stuff in, to be honest, later when I'm playing live, and I've already recorded and released the album. Yeah, you got so your the muscle memory down, you can just improvise as you go. Then I improvise, yeah. So, which is the wrong way. I mean, it's the only way really I can do it. But in a perfect world, you'd be able to play a song live for a while. Go, okay, that's how I'm going to record the baseline, and then go into the studio. Yeah, but you just can't do it. it never happens you know? that way. Yeah, it's the opposite. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys, and uh, I'm for go- having us. Being you are a character, um, <laughs> so are you, Peg. Peg, you've you've written I don't know how many songs, but a lot. And just keep up the good work. Keep keep putting out the stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're just trying to record them all now. Just get them down yeah. before it's too late, right? Like we're all we're all getting up there. Like we got plenty of time, I think, but you just never know what's going to happen with these fires. Yeah, you never these, know. Yeah, you never know. And I don't think there's any reason to ever stop. You know what I mean? Like music is such a youth culture thing, but like, yeah, we need to be the the wise men of the continuing to write into alien levels of oldness. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And if it's easier now, too, uh, like with technology, everyone can be in a different part of the country and we can send each other yeah, music yeah. and write it without each other in the same room, well, send so it I back. Out here, I, was, I went down to L.A. and recorded some tracks with Strogers and then brought him on my flash drive out here and then we're going to record his bass parts before I go back, you know? It's so mm-hmm. easy. Yeah. Love it. And then, yeah. We Hello. try to get as much done home recorded as we can, you know? And just because we don't have a lot of money, it's just all our personal honey influence. Yeah, yeah. I think it works. Get as much done. Yeah. Today, the with the technology that we have is is so amazing for musicians, it's for ind- independent artists to just do what you want to do. You could, I mean, you hit the right spots. You could even have a hit song you record in your bedroom. I mean, it happens uh, yeah. all the time. Obviously, even way back, you know, in the late 90s with Beck. Beck came out with I'm a loser, yeah, baby. Right. You know, yeah, it was recorded yeah, in his yeah. bedroom. And yeah. Billie Eilish, now present day. I wonder if she probably goes to a studio now, but she started yeah. all those hit songs yeah. that she had were recorded in their yeah. bedroom. Um, her and her brother. So yeah, I don't knock it ever. Honestly, like I recorded some backup vocals on a recent album for MXPX or whatever in a hotel room. Like just on my phone. Like just because I needed to do something, you know, it's like things like that. Yeah. Just technology, it's beautiful. And we're doing this podcast. You're in Hawaii. Technology. I'm in Bremerton. <laughs> technology. Say yeah. it with me. <laughs> well, 2024 is uh, off to a weird start already with uh, sports stuff. Uh, Washington State, <laughs> or uh, not Washington State, actually, uh, UW, University of Washington Huskies. Um, went undefeated and then in the nationals just got their asses handed to them yeah. by Michigan. <laughs> and I, I wasn't really a college fan, but I love 
wash i love local you know sports and things like that so i love seattle seahawks seattle kraken seattle supersonics (laughs) you dub washington huskies and so they had such a good season that I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna finally watch some college football and watch, uh, you know, a couple of games. <laughs> and so and I got demise. And then I was just like, oh, okay, back to, back to something else. Let, let me let me go write his own. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Aliens or like no? <laughs> I know the aliens. I know. You remember uh, that party that we played in orange county when you guys came out we played that small apartment probably like 25 years ago do you remember that yes absolutely shared, that was shared equipment that was so much fun yeah i actually yeah. thought about that earlier we should have talked about that well i'll we'll put this in um yeah i was talking about, i was just thinking about that because that was a long time ago but we just i remember you guys were like in town you're like we just want to play a house party and we're like we got a place and we're like let's do it and then we just we we just played like five songs each and just had a fun time and it was like in a tiny little apartment yeah that was great and uh yeah, Dave was on trumpet, right? Dave. Yeah. What's his last name? Chevalier. Yeah. Well, we yeah. played sax in those days. Sax. He did start out playing trumpet in the first year of the Gingy Jack. Yeah, he did. Oh, that wasn't the first year <laughs> when we played that party. <laughs> what? What? what first year? When Gingy's first started, there was like a six-piece stock core band. Yeah. There was a bunch and of people. All those demos. Yeah, all those demos sound like kind of like that, you know, like distorted choruses on ska songs and you know horns over punk rock and stuff like that and then uh um i think by the time we played that party we were down to like the armageddon massive four Four of us you know more like clash yeah okay yeah i love it when we used to be able to yeah that was fun it was so visceral and like it was just like I have flashes of memories from that party, you know? I don't remember, like, yeah. fluidly, like, everything that happened, but it's in my head, like, okay, I, I can see the blinds on the, on the window. <laughs> like, it's so apartment-y, you know, and it was a carpet. There was, like, a full, there was, like, a full arcade game in there. In the garage. My buddy, like, was the guy who did the arcade games at Chuck E. Cheese, and he would bring, arcade bring game. a full, like, fighter game. Like, nice. See, or something to the party. I, I wish we had video of that. Like just some yeah. video. I have man. some photos actually. I Do you? Photos send them yeah. yeah, yeah, send them over. That'd be awesome, man. That, that those fun. are good times. I wish. You know, things like that do still happen. We do spontaneous things, but it's just you don't realize how cool that is until yeah, so you, you know, get older. You, yeah, so many and years like, later. Wow, that really happened. Well, yeah. I just tell even when you asked us, I I don't know how you got through to us back in those ancient yeah Amen, before and, cell phones. Like, yeah. I could just tell when you're like, hey, is there any like, house parties you can play? I was like, man, these guys are sick. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, you mi- it cut out. Yeah. Oh, just the way that you were asking to play a party. I was like, man, I can just tell you guys are sick of the venue after venue after venue. Yeah, we needed like that, cool party, com- yeah. like comfort food in a way, like right, <laughs> like some yeah, just no worries or stress, no no pressure. Yeah, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, you're right. I bet it was a bit of that. Just like let's just do something we like where we started, like when we used to do it all the time yeah, ourselves, yeah. and just that find was a probably like ninety nine, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. It might have been slowly going the way of the Buffalo. Day, I think it might have been, like been right before that. I think it was probably in between. I think that's where it was. Yeah. Dude, this last night, like, um, we were driving home talking about this, and we were blasting, uh, Do Your Feet Hurt. Do Your Feet Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking good. That, yeah. that riff. Dude. It's hard. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Man, I wish you guys would have seen us. You guys should have seen us at the Hollywood Palladium last week. It was insane. Uh, Sold oh, out. Yeah. Sold out. What? What day was that? It was Saturday was night. Saturday, Saturday night. And uh, oh, J- January six. January 6th. And uh, oh, just beautiful thing to see. So oh, many man. people from probably from the very beginning of our career to present day kids that are seeing us for the first time and yeah, just singing, awesome. singing along and just the, yeah, it was just, we really, we really, really kind of just, had a moment, had a huge moment. It was amazing. A big, a big sort of cornerstone to 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 this new era. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, yeah I great. feel I feel like the new era isn't as uh, interactive with the shows. You know, like when gro- growing up in the '90s, you go to shows and everyone is just in the show, 
in the front of the stage, singing along, interactive, involved. I feel like now it's a lot of stiff audiences yeah. and phones, you know what I mean? So when you can really connect, like back There's, in the old school days when people like look forward to going to a show, I yeah. think that's, that's something to say, you know? Yeah, I mean, we still, I think it's just mixed for us. Like, there's still, there's still a, a lot of people in the, to the show and like up front, yeah. but then there, there's plenty of people with phones and it kind of like mixes both. And then sometimes those people that are into it have to get their phone out and like film this thing and then they put it away and then they get into, you know, but it's just a different culture now. I mean, yeah, yeah. you got, you got to do things a little differently. Um, you got to expect a little different crowd, but, I mean, when you play a like a really small packed punk show with no barricade, yeah, you got to hold on to that phone if you have it in your hand because it's <laughs> going to get knocked, you know, because things get crazy. But um, you know, when you have the big, big crowds, the dynamic changes a little bit. The show changes a little bit. It is about the crowd, but it's about kind of being larger than life. It's about sort of just presenting these songs in a way that are going to sound great and not just be about energy. You have to mix the energy with with a presentation in a way, in a different right. way. I don't know. I, it, both are good, because I love playing punk shows and shows that are small, tight, no barricade. People are just smashing everyone. Yeah. But I also love just the triumphant feeling of playing to a packed huge audience of huge festival, yeah. a huge headlining show here at the Palladium or something. That feels great. It feels... Yeah. It feels like you're a kid running around the house. You know, it really does. It's a great feeling. So, yeah. um, MXPX is bigger than ever, too. Yeah, I feel, I feel like MXPX is definitely bigger than ever. We grew dur over the pandemic, we grew and we did these live streams and we just kept, kept putting things out, kept going. Um, yeah. but, you know, the MXPX team that we have has been amazing and by no means are we perfect. We, we, we're late on some things, we screw things up, whatever. But, like, you can always just, you know, when you have a job like we do, you see all these big corporations screwing up big time, like, all the, you're like, we wouldn't even yeah. be that bad. Like, in their messaging, in their this or that, all, all we screw up is, like, we don't have, like, a poster artwork ready in time, so we have to wait a week to announce a show or something like that. It's like, okay, yeah, we, we, we're going to be all right. But... When it gets too stressful, I have to remind myself, hey, the reason why we do this is because I don't want a real job. And real jobs are stressful, usually. Yeah. Um, worse than whatever can come up, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but, you know, when you have your own skin in the game, it can get stressful. And there's just no way around that all the time, right? Um, and there's varying degrees of that. You know, I don't know how nervous you get when you push release or schedule on a new ep for the dingies or something but maybe you've done it so many times that you're like yeah i'm good but yeah. for other people yeah. Yeah. they get nervous right they get nervous they're like i don't know if i screwed something up and don't know about it and this is permanent and i'm but uh, i gotta yeah. push they this overthink button. it they overthink it overthink they don't it. just let it be it yeah itself, so be organic my version of that for mxpx is like for you know being on stage is if I'm super nervous, that means I didn't prepare enough. Like, it's okay to be nervous. I'm always a little nervous. But if I prepare a lot, if I know exactly how I'm going to do this show, I'm ready. Then I'm not as nervous. If, I, if I'm like, there's this part where I'm not ready for it. I don't know what's going to happen during this bit. It's, you know, we kind of talked about it, but we washed over it. We didn't really nail it down. Yeah. That makes me nervous, right? Yeah. So... So it just tells myself, prepare more, practice more. Uh, you know, if, if we're not practicing as a band during the week, do, you know, sing myself, sing out, yeah. you know, at least every Play day sing and, you know, I don't know, just use, use the voice, things like that. And, and everybody kind of yeah. has that some, something like that in their life, whether it's a job or, a, you know, if you're a kid, you know, you have a test or, you, you know, you're going you know playing the big game right or whatever it is but i feel right. like feeling pressure is a good thing to a certain extent you know like we can only take so much you know and other people certain people can take more and others can take less right so for me it's just a matter of just working that pressure cooker like how how much can you right. take and yeah. 
I don't know. It's uh, it's cool to see you guys do it all independent and be in control, you know, so that you can decide how much you of that pressure you want. To yeah, project yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been amazing to to be independent and to we work with like a live nation we'll work with them but we don't have to we could yeah. we could work with indie late you know indie promoters on shows which we do but to be able to work with big corporations but not be married to them like they don't own us at all we can say no anytime yeah. is amazing yeah. yeah yeah cool all right you guys appreciate you thank you Always. um Man, wish you the best. Everybody check out the new EP, Drop Seeds by the Dingies. And someday maybe we'll have Armageddon Massive on vinyl. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. You never know. Cheers, you guys. All right, Mike. See you, brother. See you, brother. Yep. Peg, leg, and bean. Peace. Peace.